Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Class is in session. Jenna teaches Ian. History. The history of Gaius Julius Caesar, part two. Part two. This is going to be a three-parter, like three parter, ladies and gentlemen. Um, sorry, but Julius Caesar has had many accomplishments, even though he didn't have that long of a life. I mean, I guess in those times it was probably longer than most, but it was a, it was a long and interesting one, so... Buckle on in, classes in session. Yes. So okay. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna try to take uh, digital notes here. All right. Or actually what I should have done is brought my, my uh, iPad. But no, I'm gonna I'll just type it right here on my phone. Okay. Cheers. Cheers, oh, wait. All right, so let's see if I can actually uh remember shit. All right. Yeah. So so far, Julius Caesar has uh he has taken over Gaul, taken over Britain, and he has risen from being just a guy from a no name family to being the head of the Senate and a consul of Rome. Now we are at fifty four BC. Caesar's conquered Roman Britain and now wishes to return to Rome. But many changes have taken place in Caesar's absence. One of his most important allies, Marcus Crassus, and his legions were greatly defeated in the Battle of of Carhae, where he encountered the Carthian Empire, which is now known as modern-day Turkey. Marcus Crassus was an outstanding merchant and negotiator, but a dismal military leader, and Crassus lost his life in that battle. With the Trimvariant Alliance now broken, this allowed General Pompey to take political control over Rome. The emerging wealth and fame of Caesar concerned Pompey, who had already had contempt for him since the beginning of Julius's career. And so without the presence of Crassus to support Caesar in the Roman Senate, Pompey no longer saw any reason to toler- tolerate Julius Caesar or his military campaigns and began to make accusations that Caesar's war exceeded its time in Gaul and was the uh, it was for only Caesar's financial gain and not that of Rome's. What were the uh, accusations? The accusations were that um, Caesar was just he he was fighting over there and pillaging for his own financial gain and not sending any of that money back to Rome. Okay, yeah. So it's not the accusations like they do it now, where it's like uh, your your son uh, has been caught taking crack and you have been with your assistant no it's uh it's not like the um it's not like well Cl- it's not he, like Clinton. Asked, he asked to masturbate in front of me I, not those kind of accusations i did not have sex with that woman oh. yeah <laughs> this is my clinton that's a that's not, that's not the, bad uh, with, the, with his thumb nobody can yeah. see what you're doing though see that's how they <laughs> that's how they do it I, yeah but you can you can sense it right you can sense the thumb up in the air i, I did not have sex with that woman that's yeah. Nah, my, my Clinton's not that I good. I don't know. I think we need. I got to work we on need Clinton. To, we need to watch old Clinton speeches. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love Clinton, man. It's, isn't it stupid? We're so dumb, though. How? Who gives a fuck who our president's fucking? I mean, really? You know what I mean? Well, I mean, unless he's fucking children, but like, if he's just banging and if he's cheating on his wife, who, who cares? Plus, look at his wife. Oh my god. You know what I mean? <laughs> All their wives are gross. Of course, they're cheating. Yep. Famous things that Ian Ian gets quoted on. <laughs> All the president wives are gross. Of course, they're cheating. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah! Cheers to that. I mean, his wife looks like Andy Griffith. Doesn't doesn't I don't see the resemblance? Doesn't Hillary Clinton look I like Andy Hillary, Griffith? I always thought that Hillary Clinton and um and Martha Stewart looked more like each other than. No, Martha Stewart is is kind of sexy to me. Martha Stewart is sexy to every guy now that she's got street cred and she's best friends with Snoop Dogg. I bet she's such a freak, man. I bet you Martha Stewart's a freak. And she knows how to make these beautiful ensembles. What is, I, want, I wonder <laughs> See, what she I looked like. I do a good Martha Stewart. Who knows what she sounds like, though? Who cares? Everybody who watches her home improvement shows. And this is how you make who the cares? world's most amazing. Who cares, turkey. Martha? Just t- t- take your shirt off and shut the fuck up. <laughs> Okay, moving along. Moving on. Uh, uh, one more one more outburst from you, Mr. Levitt, and you will be sent <laughs> to the corner. Uh, ooh, okay. And spanked with that ruler. 
right. <laughs> All right. So anyways, he's making accusations that Caesar's only there and that he's only there on golfers own financial gain that they've already been they've already been um, taken over years beforehand. And all right, hold on. Pause. Hmm? What's going on, Mr. Levitt? We got no water. There, there's two empty, empty cups. Will you, uh, will you go get some water? Go fill up with water. Okay, I'll go fill it. You want one of those? Sure. Because I can chat about nothing. I think you can't. So, yeah, see. So what's happening is that is that I ran out of water over here, which is going to ultimately frustrate me. And then I won't be able to remember, uh, you know, all the knowledge that I'm getting uh, uh, hit over the head with. You know, but see, back in the day, they there was all these scandals. They still had scandals, but they it wasn't like the bullshit now. And the, back in the day too, they're all they're gonna try to kill you. You know what I mean? So that's that's the, the disastrous part of it. It's different. Like right now, like these days, they try to get you on sca- sexual scandals or whatever uh, stuff you did in the past. Back in the day, they'll get you on how you were. Actually, how you were moving money, which is actually very similar, although they'll try to have you killed. Yeah. Yeah. So Caesar's ordered to disband from his legions, and he's called back to Rome to face trial for the Senate and declared an enemy of Rome by Pompey. At the time, there were few in the Senate that would rise up against Pompey and his accusations, and Caesar knew that if he was to follow that order, that his life would be over. And so, being the political and military genius that... Caesar was, he decides to march to Rome with his legions and march through the city to command respect, even if it has to be done by force. This event was recorded in history as the second start or the start of the second civil war of the Roman Republic. Caesar is now left with the fact that in order to return to Rome, he would have to attack his own city. And Pompey, who was also an accomplished general, knew that Rome could not hold out against the veteran legions of Gaul. He knew that he needed to amass an army of soldiers to defend Rome. And to achieve this, he called in the Roman legions that were serving in Greece. But now it's a race against time, you see. Caesar's forces have got the the known pace that aren't matched by any other legion ever seen in that time in, in Europe. And so they're racing now against the Grecian legions to get to Italy, to Rome. And they get there so quickly, they have days ahead of the Grecian army, and Pompey has to flee, or flee, has to flee, has to flee, flee, there's a word. So Pompey's, he, he fled to Greece, and he fled there to, to get with those, that legion in order to create a counterattack. Um, because of this, the, the citizens were really worried that once, Caesar marches through the gates that he's going to plunder and and take the citizens over but you know that's his town ta- that's his town that's his home and when they come in and plunder are they are they murdering or are they taking slaves well that's what they would do in other in other cities to take it yeah. over you know that's what they did to Gaul that's what they did to Brittany that's what they did to all of the Middle East and to Egypt yeah they took it over in that way and they take them they take their money they take their wealth they take slaves you know and they force the other leaders into submission Mm -hmm. and then to now become the part of the Republic. But this is his hometown. This is the base. This is the, the, the city that he went out to fight for to create an empire. Right. So he's, he walks in the gates and he's like, there's no way in hell that I'm going to enslave my own citizens, enslave my own people. And so he orders his legions to not even touch any of the, any of the people not even don't think about stealing any of their goods. Don't think about stealing any of their foods. These are, and he tells them, these are your own people. You're here to defend them from Pompeii, not to fight against them. So he declares, uh, he declares that he holds sovereignty with all of them and that they are safe. And he ends up leaving Rome in the hands of his second in command, who is Mark Antony. And he ends up face or he ends up going and chasing Pompeii. Caesar and Pompey in 48 BC finally face each other in the Battle of Dicarium. 
Much to Caesar's surprise, Pompey has amassed a way bigger army than he had to, than he had anticipated, and due to the smaller numbers and a breach in in Caesar's camp fortifications, Pompey wins, and Caesar is forced to retreat. In August 9th, though, of forty eight BC, the Battle of Pharsalus is fought in Central Caesar Greece. is forced to retreat uh, out of his uh, out of Rome. No, no, he follows Pompey to Greece. He's, where he, where Pompey had met with those Grecian legions that he had called home. So basically Rome had had legions all throughout the Middle East, all throughout like all the way up to um southern to southern Germany, throughout the British Isles, all throughout Gaul, which is now France and like Belgium and in uh, lower central Europe and all the way down into Egypt, Mesopotamia, um uh Friggin, like where it was now modern day Morocco and Northern Africa. So that was their major plot of land. And in order to try to save himself when he was in Greece, Pompey tried to call to the Grecian army to march over there. They were all, they were still stuck in Greece when, um, when Caesar had taken his army from France and had already marched all the way down into Italy. Like they they kicked ass getting there. It's amazing whereas the that they Greeks can, are like, no, nah, I don't want to face them. The, you know? They the, the tr- they're able to travel and march by foot and horseback and buggy, right? Mm-hmm. That was their mode of transportation. But they marched day and night, and these are legions that have been fighting with with Caesar, their hand and foot, yeah. by like fighting with their own hands for over a decade with them. They had such a loyalty to Caesar. That, like he was seen as a, he was seen as a living god to them. What would be interesting would be kind of fun to do is to um, see if you can measure the 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 mar- from march to sleep right mm-hmm. from from how they traveled back then and do that yourself within mileage right do that and boom 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 and and in the same weather and see what they had to endure that we cannot endure these days. Yeah, but you, know? you got to think that like. What takes us in a matter of days to travel, not even that in a matter of hours to travel, it would take them months. Correct. Which, but uh, never mind the time, but the, the, uh, uh, wear and tear on your feet and oh, yeah. joints and you know what I mean? And, and so when they're traveling, they're not just traveling. And it's with, not like they're they not just traveling antibiotics. With, yeah, they're not, you know, they're not to, just yeah. traveling. That's just it though. They're not just traveling with, um, with soldiers. They're traveling with, with shoe smiths with leather workers with cooks you know people who are actually just uh, they're soldiers but they're they're also um they're just regular people that have got a trade they're they're mm. in the army but they're not they're kind of reserved as the people who take care of the soldier soldiers they only get called into action when it gets down to the bare minimums you know because what are they wearing on that feet you leather. know yeah so they, they yeah got, at the time it was leather they soles. Got the, the, the strong leather soles Either way, that's going to create a uh, a, a callus, but also a a blister. Yeah. Like I imagine, you know, to me that's interesting because I imagine your your like feet will blister through, up. We can go through the whole history of I mean, of the the Roman soldier uh, uniform. Yeah, and, I mean, I mean, you, I mean, we got to get through it. I get it, but um, I'm just saying those things are interesting. To no, me. I, I yeah. was saying, yeah, you want to? Let's do it. <laughs> Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> we'll talk about fashion of the Roman soldiers during the 54 BC. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I, it, that would be a great podcast, in my opinion, the fashion of all these soldiers, you know, and how yeah. how they came up with it, how it was made. I mean, and the, and the progress of the uh, uniforms, mil- uh, the, the uniform scientific advancement and the uh, advancement of the actual soldiers. Like, how did their clothing escape? create the landscape mm-hmm. of them to become a new dominant military force. Mm-hmm. That'd be cool. Okay. I'd be into that. Yeah. I mean, I know a million people that would be into that, but they're all kind of costume nerds themselves. So costume nerds or, yeah. or, 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 into fashion yeah, or, or, or military, like military weirdos. Cause I love military fashion. Oh yeah. It looks great. Yeah. I it, agree. You know what I mean? And throughout the world. Oh yeah. You know? And it's just like, I think I, I said that on a I podcast. I mean, there's a reason why women you know, like fall yeah. for men in uniform. That's for sure. Well, wh- why is that? Let, let, let's get to that real quick. Okay. Is, why is the 
women fall for men in uniform is because of the job and most of the time in uniform it's usually a dangerous type job, yeah i right? think it's it i think most of the time in uniform it's one you're putting yourself your life on the line not for yourself but for other people you know mm-hmm. you, you're 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 fighting side by side you're standing there with your brother you would die for him he would die for you you know and you're die for your country you have a person you're a person who fights for a cause because in any sort of uniform, you're going out for a job and usually to bring back money for the family. Yeah. You know, so I think maybe that's why women are, plus it, it makes, it, it straightens you up, broads your shoulders, makes you look, you know. Yeah. Hmm. I agree. It's very interesting. Yeah. yeah. Women love a man in uniform. Yeah. Well, women love a man that works, I think is the, <laughs> is basically what you're after. Well, what? Guys don't like women in uniform? No. You don't think it's sexy? You put me in camo all the time. He, co- Ladies and gentlemen, he constantly buys me camo clothes. Just saying. Uh, I don't think it has anything to do with... Uh, in uniform because those are in uniform yeah. those are they're, <laughs> they're low sweatpants. cut for your fucking see your belly and your ass and shit <laughs> you just like to see me in camo so well, when I, we I, work out we match i like camo but no and it's not women or men don't give a fuck about women's uniform unless that you unless it's a stripper's uniform <laughs> yeah all right i don't know i think i beg to differ i think that i think that a guy would see a girl who is uh in the military and able to run and do push-ups and kick ass and can shoot and and uh, know. I think they like that, but I don't. I, I really don't feel men are into chicks, especially in military uniform. There's yeah. nothing attractive about it. I don't know. I, I think that uh, the fact that she's able to do that is attractive, in, yeah. in my opinion. But well, the uniform itself is unattractive. That's part of the uniform, though. The uniform for us, part of the attraction for us, is knowing that if they get the privilege to wear that uniform. They are physically fit. They can be great providers, great protectors. You know, like they... Men, men don't feel that way. Okay. No, men don't think that way. No, I'm sure not. About women. We don't give a fuck if you're a provider. <laughs> we, we don't care about any of that. Mm. I mean, uh, I don't even need to say what we care about. No, you guys just care about sex. That's it. Well, that's not necessarily true either. We want to, We care that you're you're worth a shit, but... The fact that you know the, the, you're going out and fighting a war, we're, most of us are like, mm, nah, don't do that. You wouldn't think that's sexy though, if like a girl came home and she was a decorated soldier, like a marksman. No, no, there's nothing sexy about it. It's uh, respect, yes. Uh, well, sexy, I, I no. Figure respect is sexy. Nope. Because let me tell you, Mm-mm. if I, if you're good looking, but I don't respect you, there's no way I'm having sex with you. Yeah, guys, don't give a fuck. Yeah. We'll, we'll fuck anything we don't respect. We don't care. You guys are gross. <laughs> Men are gross. Ew. All right, let's travel on from that. So, I'm all, ew, men are gross. So, August 9th, 9th 48 BC. The Battle of Pharsalius is fought in central Greece. The battle was aggressive and Pompey had the numbers, but Caesar had the men with experience and determination. Pompey was defeated. After the defeat, Pompey found himself alone. Most of, the, most of the troops and the people that he had traveled with in his party had fled or perished, and some of them even went to Caesar begging for forgiveness. Pompey himself fled to Egypt, but not expecting the Egyptian royalty to side with Caesar, he, as soon as he stepped on Egyptian soil, was killed by Ptolemy the Thirteenth, Cleopatra's first brother-husband. I like it, how you say brother, husband. Because he was his, he was her brother and her husband. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's important to say brother, husband. Yeah, right? the brother yeah. husbands. Because we're just. Like, like I'm just going to start saying that with all with all of the, the aristocracy and the royals that I'm going to end up talking about. Most of them were cousins or yep. brothers or, you know, and the Egyptians were especially keen. Did, on, did anyone think that was gross or that was just no, part of the deal? They, man. they thought they, you know? they legitimately thought that to be a royal was a blessing in your bloodline by God, deemed by God. And so you keep it in the bloodline in order to keep the bloodline as close to God and as pure as possible. Wow. I know. I mean, it's hard to think about at this day and age, but, uh, you know, it it was definitely a different time and there wasn't as many people and blah, 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 blah. And I get, you know, just like uh, when you're breeding dogs, you keep the bloodline 
you know, that's it's kind of like breeding dogs. You want to keep it as pure. Yeah, but th- and this is why uh, yeah. uh, this is why all of the early aristocracies were horribly deformed. I mean, yeah. they they say that they say that King Tut was like four foot seven, had a club leg, his his head was misshapen, and he like he only lived to be seventeen years old because he was that sickly. Is that true? Yes. Oh my god. His eyebrows this, are falling yeah, off. This <laughs> yeah. it's just, just falls off in the plate of food. Yeah. And, and it's funny, like how how decorated we see his tomb was and everything, and all the riches and stuff. But it's because they thought that he was a god. Mm. Pharaoh means god, mm. and that's not just in Egyptian stuff. That's also in in uh, ancient Mayans. It's in the Chinese dynasties, the ancient Chinese dynasties and Japanese dynasties. Like this is all throughout the world at this time. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> to fuck your brothers, to be closer to God. Woo. Yeah, I mean, there wasn't as many people back then too. You know, it wasn't. Yeah, so everybody was already related in the first place. Yeah, like no one's no one back then's going to the pub. I mean, if we go by the Bi- if, chicks, if we yeah. go by the Bible, who did Cain and Abel marry? They married their sisters because there's nobody else making babies. Yeah. Where did their ba- Where did those women come from? Man, but sexual arousal must be different. It, mu- it must have been just mating. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it's you're here, I'm here. There's nobody else here. Hello. Yeah. But when it comes down to the royal families, it was done specifically for a reason. It's to stay to keep to keep the god gene within the bloodline. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, I mean, in that, that time, it was it was populating the earth. That's how they looked at it. Like we need to populate the earth. I guess so. We don't we don't look at it like that. We don't I mean, look at it. We when, don't look at populating. In that sense, the earth. we're thinking about like ancient, ancient, ancient times. But like that's only in Bible stuff. Like that's nothing scientific. That's nothing. <laughs> that's nothing going with a with how. The homogeneous has traveled throughout time and changed, and our DNA is morphed. You know, it's not going from like ancient Homo sapiens to who we are now. Right. So, anyways, all right. So, Pompey's defeated, and after his defeat, he finds himself alone and in Egypt. And who's in Egypt? But you know, there's Ptolemy, and there's Cleopatra. And they're, the Egyptians are afraid that if they harbor Pompey, the wrath of Caesar is going to come, like fall, like fall down upon them. So Ptolemy, he murders Pompey. And when Caesar steps foot in Egypt and finds out about this, and he's handed the remains of Ptolemy, Caesar's pissed. He's pissed because this is a consult of Rome, who Rome is the the the. Basically, they've taken over Egypt in the first place. You know, they've left it as a sovereign con- a country to, to rule themselves, but they're still an outsiding land of Rome. So they've killed a consult of Rome. They murdered him secretively, which is cowardice to, to Caesar, and they didn't let Caesar deal with him the way that he wanted to. Caesar wanted to forgive, forgive Pompey. He wanted to forgive him. He wanted to put him back in the Senate because having Pompey being murdered... This now splits up half the Senate. Half the Senate is alongside of Caesar. Half the Senate is alongside Pompey. When they had the tri- triumvirate, whatever it was, when it was Marcus Crassus, Pompey, and Caesar, and the three the of tri- them. The tri what? Tri- tri- I can never pronounce it. It's the triumvirate or whatever. It's an alliance that, that Crassus, uh, Pompey, and Caesar all had together. And they ruled, they and they, ruled it's, Rome it's together. It's called something? It, it's yeah, called I, I read it earlier. And now I'm just talking. I'm not even reading what I wrote. I'm just talking. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I want to. I want to get that right. The triumph. Triumph. Hold on, I'll get to it. Yeah. Uh, the the triumvirate. Sorry, the tri- triumvirate. Who named that? And that, that that's I don't a, know. Who's making it, all these words that are really hard alliance? for me to pronounce? Yes, it's an alliance between the three most powerful men in Rome. They all they all sat down together. And this is before um, Caesar went off to fight in Gaul and to try to create larger lands. And like, if you guys want, you can listen back to the very f- the the first episode on this and explains it all. But Marcus Crassus, Pompey, and Julius Caesar, the three most powerful men in Rome, sat down together and agreed to rule together because they all had equal strengths. 
Marcus Crassus was the richest man in Rome. Pompey was a was a very well to do general who was both rich and he was a, he was a great military power himself. And then you had you had Julius Caesar who was the budding new famous politician who could win over people with his silver tongue and then on top of that went into battle, won many battles, came back and kicked ass for the people and then went back out to battle and created an empire. So the three of them in the beginning had already planned to be together and like rule this stuff together. Once Crassus, Marcus Crassus died, Pompey didn't, he didn't like, he didn't like Caesar. He thought Caesar was, was a pompous asshole and trying to take his job from him. So Caesar got mad after finding out that Egypt killed him because this is a well-respected man who had many followers under him, and now you're dividing the Senate. And this will all lead up to his demise eventually. This is going to be a three-parter. We'll get to that in the third part. But he got pissed off at Ptolemy. So knowing that Egypt is also in its own civil war, Cleopatra hates her brother-husband, doesn't want to be married to him, definitely doesn't want to have his kid, and definitely wants to have her own sovereign state for herself because she's older. She's more mature in the ways of the the Senate, the ways of uh, politics, and she, the only reason why her brother is the one in power because it's because he's the old or he was the oldest male in line, and she's forced to be married to him. So she sneaks in to Caesar's room knowing that Caesar doesn't like Ptolemy and is already pissed off the way that he handled the death of, of a Roman consul and somebody who, like Caesar saw him as his equal. Even though they didn't like each other, didn't mean that they didn't respect each other. And he thought that he deserved way more than the death that he got. And so she sneaks into his room and it's said that that's the very night that one, she, con- she convinces him to kill her brother and to give her the throne And two, they become lovers. Mm. And that's where we're going to end it, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, we're out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do I say goodbye? (laughs) No. Oh. It's time to get out your pens and pencils. Oh, okay. Class was in session. I hope that you were taking notes. Okay. Uh, That last part, I zoned out a little bit on the last part. What was... uh, I'm not going to tell you. You should have been taking notes. Who did what? (laughs) <laughs> <What's going on? laughs> who did what at the end there oh uh, well i'll just ask you questions and if you remember all right go ahead all right in what I, I wasn't ready for that to be the end there i didn't know that was that was fast well yeah there, there was a lot though to get through oh uh, okay a lot all right there was three pages of paragraph upon paragraph upon paragraph do you need a recap uh, no go ahead okay go ahead oops yeah. All right. So, in what battle did Marcus Crassus lose his life? Uh, in the uh, uh, the battle of Battle of Gaul. Nope. Oh. No. Uh, no. That was during General Pompey. <laughs> you are really bad at paying attention in history, <laughs> baby. No. No, he he lost his life in the Battle of of Crassus, which where he was he was facing the Carthians, or not Battle of Crassus, sorry, the Battle of uh, Carhe, and he was facing the 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 the, uh, the Carthians. I was uh, okay, say the Corinthians. Yeah, because that's when uh, uh, he made allies with with uh, Marcus. No, Marcus he, Crassus. Caesar was allies with Marcus Crassus, but Caesar made an ally out of Marcus Crassus twenty years beforehand. Okay. Okay. Uh, who declares Caesar an enemy of Rome? Who declares uh, Caesar enemy of Rome? Uh, General Pompey. Hey, you got that one. Good job. Boom. Good job. I'm proud of you. I want to put a gold star on your on your chart there. Good job. Okay. All right. Next up, who won the Battle of Pharsalus? Uh, the battle. Uh... I don't know that one. That was the battle where Caesar, even though he had smaller numbers, his men were riled up against Pompey in all of his large numbers, and they overtook Pompey. Okay. All right. Uh, 
who killed Ptolemy? Oh, no, sorry. Who killed Pompey? Not Ptolemy. Um, I don't know. I have a note, but the well, read spell check fucked it up. Okay, well, read your note. It says, uh, Bert has an organ. <laughs> <laughs> and tease of golf. <laughs> Spell the the notes on the phone does not work for fast note taking <laughs> because it just tries to fix the your your lettering. Bert has an organ is not the correct answer. Oh, <laughs> although I would hope Bert has an organ. Um, no, it was the person who killed Pompey was Ptolemy the Thirteenth, Cleopatra's brother husband. That's right. Yes. And why did Cleopatra sneak into Caesar's room? The fuck. Well, that was that was rumored to be part of it. Oh, to get information. No. To convince him into helping her overthrow Ptolemy. And eventually kill him. Oh, okay. So there you go. But ultimately, she she did sixty nine and stuff. Ultimately, Bert had an organ. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and that is the end of the life of Gaius Julius Caesar, part two. Part three has got a lot of stuff in a very small amount of time, and that will be next week. All right, guys, we're out. Late. Cheers. <laughs>